Hello there, and welcome to a slightly different kind of review here on the channel today. Now, this initial audio might be a little bit more echoey than it typically would be, and the reason for that is because I'm going with the GoPro audio exclusively for the first part of the video, and then of course we're going to get into some gameplay a little bit later on. Now, the reason why I'm doing this video, as I mentioned in my overarching review of Project Cars 3, is because Thrustmaster contacted me and asked me to review their Ferrari kit which is basically the wheel and pedals, along with the Ferrari Edition headset for playing online as well. So first of all, we're gonna unbox those, then of course I'll set them up, and then we will shift into gameplay. So first of all then we have this. This is the Thrustmaster T50, and it's the Ferrari Edition wheel, the Scuderia Ferrari. Now, of course, we're going to get on with unboxing it because of the fact that this was inside its own packaging I don't have to cut up that much, so there's not that much use for the knife today. I'm going to keep that around just in case. So let's open that up. That will probably be in the way of the camera a little bit, so I'll try and keep it out of the way. Open up the box here. We've got some card. This is also my first time seeing the wheel and everything as well, because as some of you know, I'm not a wheel user, generally speaking. So it was pretty cool when Thrustmaster contacted me. I guess they don't check out the channel that often. <laughs> so first of all, we have the wheel itself in the upright position. Of course, we'll get that out of its packaging more so in a second. So I'll set that to one side for now. And then we have the pedals just here, along with some of the setup. We've got the book and a little bit of extra car. So let's get that out of the way for a second, or a second even. So, instruction manual there, we have some parts, and we have the pedal kit. Now, I've already got the pedal kit in my hand, so I'll as well unbox that one first. So, there is our pedal kit. Accelerator and brake only, no clutch on this one, as you can see. And we have cable. There's the fitment on that one. You should be able to see that one in the video. It's a little bit strongly backlit, but it'll do. This isn't a studio after all. So there are the pedals. I'll put them down for just a second. And now, of course, let's look at the thing which most people want to check out, which is the wheel itself. And get the plastic off of there. So there is the Scuderia Ferrari Edition wheel with paddles as well. I'll take a further look at it myself in just a second and turn it around. So there's the underside, there is a connector there if you want to screw it in. A bit closer to the camera so you can see it. Connector there, the front of the wheel itself where you can see the buttons, etc. Paddles, the T150. And there are the connectors at the back with the cables, etc. So we've got two cables here. One cable has the USB, second cable has this double pin connector. Not exactly sure what kind of power pack or power source I should say they're going for on this one. This looks to me more like a, what is that, like American or even Euro style plug. So hopefully this does fit into one of my standard plugs. I'll place this down on the table for just a second. Take a look at the wheel myself. So it's got an interesting feel to it. It's not a full 360 degree wheel. Oh, actually it is. Yes, it is. It's just because the uh, <laughs> just because of the paddles it wouldn't turn. So what's the degrees of rotation on that one? Oh, interesting. So it's got what's that? 900 maybe degrees of rotation, possibly even more. Interesting. Okay. So as I said, the paddles paddles feel like they are metal which is an interesting touch. I kind of like that, to be honest. Grip is nice. The top is more of a plastic. The sides are rubber. Obviously, most of the time, you're gonna be holding it 10 and two race car style, or in my case, top of the wheel. <laughs> so R2, L2 buttons, options. The centerpiece doesn't move. Got L3, R3, PS4. If I turn this around, as, I, as you should be able to see just there, if I get that closer up to the camera both a PS4 and PS3 mode up here. And what else have we got? 
Thrustmaster logo on the top. Ferrari logos elsewhere. So there's the wheel. And now let's take a look at the connector parts as well. Not quite as interesting to look at, but it is all important to the packaging. So let's see what we've got in here. We have what appears to be a stand and a lock. So this stand, I'm guessing... Ah, uh, yes, this. So that most likely goes under here, I think. Yeah, that looks to me like you'd have the wheel placed on the table, stand underneath, probably there, and then have this connector go through it and tighten into there. So, that, that is the stand. Interesting. I'm not exactly sure what I'm going to be resting this on myself yet, but we'll see in due time. So that's the pedals. That is the wheel. Place them down there for just a second. And now let's briefly take a look, of course, at the next part of the kit. And this is actually a part of the kit which I was really looking forward to, and to be honest, is probably something I'll use a little bit more often, which is the Scuderia Ferrari Edition headset, also made by Thrustmaster. It has volume changing on the headphones. It, it does have the microphone as well. Um, I'm hoping, especially for stuff like Gran Turismo, if I ever do use this, for instance, on GT7, I'm hoping, beyond all hope, in fact, that they bring back the party chat. Because, of course, in GT Sport, that is not a part of the game. And as I've said to you guys before, and I know some of you feel the same, I miss that. I miss being able to talk to people. And I know that some people don't really care about that, but to me, it's it's kind of important to be able to chat to people online. I know some people find it annoying. You do have the classic too much noise in the background type of situation. But to me, it's just part of the fun, especially when it's somebody who, you know, recognizes me or whatever from tunes on YouTube or whatever the case may be. I should probably be focusing more on opening this than talking. But there you go. That's the nature of an unboxing video. And this isn't my first rodeo. So... That is that open. So that is that sliced and diced. Open the top, open up the flaps, and we have our download of something. I'll check that out in a bit. Obviously, I'm not going to show that to the camera. <laughs> We've got the, I'm guessing, instructions there. Either instructions or a warranty, usually. We've got some cardboard packaging with what feels like a cable. Let's take a look at that first. Ah, okay. So this is... We've got a small button there. I think that might be for the microphone. We have the microphone itself for plugging into the side of the headset, obviously, to be able to speak into. And what appears to be our connector cord, just there. And now, of course, the main piece is the headset. Place the box on one side. We have, once again, our cordage. There's a connector on that one. There is your volume control, I believe with a mute button as well. And for the meat of this part of the unboxing, the actual headset itself, which looks pretty nice actually. Comfortable looking pair. Obviously with this particular camera angle and backlighting, you're not gonna get the full vivid colors, but you can see it well enough. Let's get that centered in frame. So it's not the biggest pair of headphones around, but it looks pretty nice. It's got kind of a, a pit crew vibe to it, which of course ties into the whole Scuderia Ferrari or stable of Ferrari. The stable, of course, being the reference to the pit lane. There is an adjustment on the side there. I'm guessing that's to move the headphones up and down, perhaps. Yep, it looks like that's the case. So let's move those down a bit. Very nice quality padding on the top. Extremely nice, actually, very comfortable. 
The headphones themselves are pretty nicely padded. Kind of a, so it's a plastic finish in gloss, as you can see. I shall plug the microphone in there. And how does that one move? So if I take that back out for a second, that looks like that stays in that position. So I'm guessing that you'd have to somewhat bend the microphone down rather than rather than twisting the whole thing. So probably something like that. Let's try these on. So immediately the sound cancellation is very good. In terms of the microphone reach, mm, could be a little bit better though. Could be a little bit farther around, but I like the look that it has. Kind of looks like a, uh, well, as I said, pit crew member. The sound cancellation is excellent, even without trying them out yet. Obviously, the main way to, to test this out is to actually use it on the game, which we're going to be doing in a second. So this cord, I'm presuming, is going to connect it to either the console or the wheel, probably the console. I don't tend to use headsets that often in this kind of configuration. I use you know, the kind of standard PlayStation or standard Xbox headset, which isn't the best, but I usually don't care that much about having some studio quality headset. Now, just to interject into my own video for just a second, there were two additional things that I wanted to point out before we go any further. One is about the stand for the wheel, and the second is about the headset, just to address a couple of the points that I mentioned. This one, of course, I referenced in the video being the stand for the headset, or, or for the wheel, I should say, where you can attach the wheel in and have a nice, sturdy support for it. I haven't tried that yet, but I believe that is the case. However, after having a quick look in the instruction book, it looks as though, if I'm correct, you can also flip it over and attach it this way so that then it will go underneath a table to allow the wheel to basically clamp onto a table so that you've got the wheel above, the clamp below, and to keep it in place. Again, that's if I've read the book correctly. Many of you, of course, who use wheels all the time will already have that as like known information. For me, who doesn't use them that often, of course, that didn't immediately come to mind. If that is correct, that's a pretty cool little feature that I guess it's reversible. It certainly looks like it would be, but we'll give that a try in a second. And the second thing is actually regarding the headset. And this one's fairly important because I mentioned that the range of movement on the microphone wasn't really ideal. The reason for that is basically I had the headset on the wrong way around. So going this direction, it didn't have that much room. So of course I had the headset on facing this direction. So this was on the right side of my head as it's laying now and going that direction, of course it didn't reach because that's just how to unlock it. So if I put the headset on the right way, which is the other way around so that this is on the left side of your head, then as you could just see then, this in fact does move all the way down to right in front of your face as you would want it to be. So actually it does do exactly what you'd want it to do. And incidentally, I pointed out in the video this little piece as well. I wasn't sure what that was for, but this looks to me as if when you remove the microphone, because you can use this headset as you know just headphones if you want to, plug it into your iPhone or whatever, as it says in the quick start guide, you can then use this to replace or to cover even the hole here. So it's not just an open exposed linkage, you can have that little plug just to make it look a little bit nicer. So I wanted to interject into the video there just to add that. So now back into the main vid. So that's it for now for the unboxing. I want to thank Thrustmaster once again for this because it's not exactly what I'm known for. I don't do wheel use. So this is going to be an interesting little experiment for me as well. I have used wheels before, uh, even in the GT Sport live event, the first ever live event. In fact, back in 2016, I believe, before the game was even released, uh, I finished fourth out of 16 people. The race is actually on YouTube, funnily enough. And uh, yeah, it was an interesting experience. As I've said before, wheels aren't really my thing, but now is the moment of truth. Let's try out this Ferrari edition setup in the game. So I've got the setup all as you can see here. I've got the wheel temporarily on a pad, just a, a dining table pad, <laughs> because it's as good as anything. We've got the sound set up, we've got the TV in front of me, and I'll probably be switching back and forth between the full screen gameplay and using the wheel. I had a quick one lap run just to get a bit of a feel for it. So chances are my driving skills still won't be that great. 
but I've got the pedals down here all plugged in. As you can see, I'm not using the headset at the moment. As far as I can tell, the headset doesn't seem to fit into the wheel itself. Uh, it does fit into a PlayStation controller, so maybe you have to do it that way. I'm not certain on that yet. But for now, the main thing is the wheel, so let's get into it, test out a race, and get started. <laughs> well, that's a good start. <laughs> right, let's put it back into first. And as you can see, we're testing it on Monza first of all. Relatively simple track, using a Ferrari to keep it in in line with uh, the Thrustmaster kit itself. It's a little bit awkward when you've got the wheel just sat on a, a pad, <laughs> as I have, but hey, we work with what we've got. Kind of like this car, it doesn't have six gears, work with what you've got. Oop. Whoopsie! I do play the game without traction control anyway. For those of you who have already watched my uh, review of the game in general, you'll have seen that I have you know, traction control off. I like minimal ABS, uh, stability turned off as well. So a lot of this is just carried over. Obviously I usually drive auto, but still. And again, I could be doing it cleaner obviously, but the main thing is getting used to the wheel at the moment. I do like the, uh, I guess it would be force feedback, I guess, from the wheel, where you can feel that little bit of resistance against you. As I've said before, I'm not really a wheel user, generally speaking, so I'm, I'm guessing that that's what force feedback is. It's funny how, for me, there's a disconnect, for some reason, between using a wheel in a game, or even just driving in a game, and real life. Regardless of the speed you're doing, there's just something about my brain that doesn't quite connect with using a wheel, despite how many cars you know, and motorbikes I've driven in real life. It's just, I don't know, there's something about it which isn't quite there for me. And it's not just about using the manual gearbox either, because my, my Maserati, for example, had a flappy paddle gearbox, much like this. Smoother, obviously, but still the principle's there. I've used a flappy paddle gearbox in plenty of cars, BMW i8. Uh, exclusively in my review of the Aston Martin Vanquish. So I've used flappy paddles before, but there's something about using a flappy paddle in a game. It just doesn't, I don't know, it just doesn't sync up with my brain in the same way that it does in real life. And again, not being uh, secured down doesn't help either. So, for this next session, let's go for another Ferrari. I'm thinking GT Class, probably a 488. So let's go for that. Now let's choose the track. Um, what shall we go for in terms of the circuit? 
Could go for Laguna Seca, Old Faithful. I think the corkscrew might be a little bit challenging at the moment. <laughs> Indy. Uh, could do Indy. Let's go for Indy. Let's go for the motor speedway. Weather. Summer. Yeah, let's go for that. Settings. Practice mode. And let's give it a go. So, let's take a look at the assists. We've got custom. No steering assist. No braking assist. We do have ABS. No stability, no traction, no track guide, no proximity indicator. Uh, I'm guessing that this just just automatically goes into a uh, manual mode. Uh, the car didn't seem to change on its own, so I'm, I'm guessing that's the case. I'm liking this car off the line. Cut the corner a bit there. Oh well. <laughs> oh, this is going to be challenging when I haven't got this secured down, I can tell already. See, um, some people, when I've mentioned in videos in the past that I personally don't find wheels to be that realistic, this is kind of what I'm talking about, because regardless of if I'm in chase cam or cockpit, cockpit mode or whatever the case may be, there's just a disconnect there for me, because obviously a game is never going to be 100% authentic, but I just, I just don't find games with a wheel at least capture the spirit of real life and I'm sure there are plenty of people who disagree but I feel like most of the people who defend the realism of a wheel tend to be people who haven't even got a driving license yet <laughs> in other words young people who might have driven a go-kart I feel like go-karts are pretty much the most accurate comparison to a racing wheel because they kind of do handle in a similar way to a racing wheel but, in my experience, I've certainly never driven a car that handles <laughs> like a racing wheel in a game does. Because, well, if they did, I'd have probably already crashed in real life by now. Cars just don't feel like this in real life. And yes, I'm doing 140 miles an hour, but even if you go around the track at normal speeds, the way that the car just shifts around, it just doesn't feel accurate. And that's nothing to do with the Thrustmaster wheel, it's just literally every wheel I've ever used from... The one at the uh, Gran Turismo Sport event, this one, uh, previous wheels, the first wheel I ever used back in Gran Turismo 4. And obviously, the issue with the wheel as well is that they're a little bit handicapped by the limitations of the game. Because you could make the best wheel anyone's ever seen, but if the game itself doesn't have realistic physics, well, obviously that's going to hinder you. And I feel like that's kind of the case for a lot of these games. Plus there's the fact that I'm just not used to it, and obviously that's always a factor. But again, those of you who follow the channel know that I review real cars as well as cars and games, and every time I drive one of those cars it's the first time I've ever driven it. I never have issues with steering the vehicle because, again, real life just has certain parameters and physics at play that don't really work in a game. And to me, that's what always holds me back from being fully immersed into the concept of using a wheel. Because no matter how good they are, they never really capture that realism to me. Again, they're realistic compared to something like a go-kart, but not compared to the cars that I've driven. And I've driven quite a few cars. <laughs> so to have the lack of realism there is not necessarily disappointing because I don't expect it to be any different but I feel like for somebody who's younger maybe hasn't driven a real car yet when you actually do you might be surprised just how different it feels to the games you've grown up with now in terms of my experience with using this wheel in particular obviously this is more of a product review of the specific wheel and I'm taking the approach of this being 
kind of like noob reviews Thrustmaster wheel because, again, I'm not some seasoned esports player using this, so in effect this is a different kind of review. This isn't somebody who's used every wheel out there and, and given my comprehensive thoughts on it. This is somebody who has used a couple of wheels here and there and kind of approaching it from the point of view that some of you may be in which is similar to me. Maybe you don't use wheels that often. Maybe you have tried to in the past and not really liked them. So from that point of view, is the wheel something you should try? Well, like many things, I would definitely say, yeah, give it a try, because you don't necessarily need to buy something to try it out. Chances are, if you're an, uh, a racing game fan, you've probably got friends who are also into it, Gran Turismo, Forza, whatever the case may be. At least one or two of those friends have probably got a wheel. If they have, chances are you've probably used it before, but if you haven't, give it a try. So as far as my thoughts on the T150 go for this video, from a non-wheel user, I think it's fun. <laughs> I wouldn't recommend going into Project Cars 3 in general expecting the most realistic experience around, and I think that that's probably a lot of what's going to dictate my thoughts in this particular review. Because in particular this is focusing in on Project Cars 3, because that's what I was requested to do. But I feel like if you tried the wheel on a different game, for example, if you tried it on GT Sport, I'm sure this wheel is compatible with that as well. If you tried it maybe on, uh, I don't know, you know, an Xbox version, on Forza, whatever, then I'm sure the experience would be different from game to game. As far as this game goes, well, I already put my thoughts out there. Whoops. <laughs> I already put my thoughts out there as far as how realistic or lack thereof Project Cars 3 is anyway. So it's going to be no surprise to anyone that I don't find the game particularly realistic either way, with a controller or with a wheel. And I think that says a lot to do with the wheel as well, because you could get a bad impression of the wheel, and that's not what I'm trying to give. What I'm trying to say is that Project Cars 3 just isn't that realistic in general. I already said as much in my review using a controller, so even with a controller that I use all the time, the game still isn't that realistic. And that's kind of the point. They've designed it to be more accessible to a wider fan base of people. So, to say that the game still doesn't feel that realistic isn't saying much. What I will say, though, about the wheel is it actually feels better. Thanks, mate. <laughs> um, what I will say about the wheel is it definitely feels, even in a game like Project Cars 3, where the physics aren't the most realistic ever, and again, they're not supposed to be. Using, for instance, this wheel compared to a controller, which I usually would, I will say that the, the wheel feels more immersive, for sure. And I know that apart from the realism, even completely apart from the realism, that is what a lot of people want from a wheel. They don't necessarily want it to be hyper-realistic, they just like the fun of having the wheel in front of them, changing gear, having the pedals, all that kind of stuff. So, I think from that point of view, you'll probably like it. It depends, obviously, if you're a Ferrari fan, as far as if you want the Ferrari kit, but they do offer it with or without a Ferrari, so you don't have to go for that version. And if you want to give one a try, like I said, try and find a friend or somebody you know who has a wheel, ask them if you can either, you know, take it home and borrow it on yours, or more likely try it on their setup, and see what you think. Obviously part of the beauty of wheels, and this is one of the biggest advantages actually over a controller, is that you can adjust the way that they feel much more. Especially with a game like Project Cars. Project Cars 1 and 2 for example, there were tons of settings that you could change to make the game feel more realistic, less realistic, more or less forgiving with a wheel, even with a controller, and it's really with a wheel that a lot of that stuff comes into its own. So. My overall thoughts are, I can see why people like it so much, it is very fun, I personally don't find any wheel, and in particular any game, to be the most realistic thing ever, certainly not compared to real life, which is the benchmark after all, but it is a lot of fun, definitely check it out if you have the chance, and on Project Cars 3, I will say that if you are more of a hardcore sim fan, you might be surprised by how good the wheel actually feels, because for me, somebody who's never used a wheel with this game before. I haven't really played the game a huge amount with or without the wheel, so if I can start picking up the game 
this quickly, even with completely standard settings, well, I would say that bodes pretty well. So again, if you get the chance to play Project Cars 3, try doing both. Try doing it with a controller, try doing it without, uh, or even with a wheel or without as well, and see what you think. See if it's for you, and as far as the wheel goes, obviously the more games you get a chance to try out on, GT Sport, Forza, whatever the case may be, the better your experience will be. So overall, that's it for my thoughts on the Ferrari Edition Thrustmaster T150. I want to once again thank Thrustmaster for sending me this kit over to test it out. And it was fun to try out Project Cars 3 as well. If, of course, you haven't watched my other review for Project Cars 3, then of course you'll want to do that as well, because in that particular review, I go more into the game in an overall sense, the cars, the tracks, all that kind of stuff. Whereas this review in particular is just focusing in on how the game feels, of course, with a wheel, because that's the whole point of this review. So overall, if you haven't checked out that video, be sure to do so. If you've come over from that video, then thanks for watching it, and I hope you enjoyed this one as well. And of course, if you want to check out more game reviews on the channel, you can click here on screen. And if you are curious about my real-world car reviews that I mentioned, Aston Martin Vanquish, Supercharged Jags, Porsche 911s, all that kind of cool stuff, then click here on screen as well to see those. But until next time, I'll see you then, and for now, as always, thanks for watching.